Hi, my name is Joseph Ally. Welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to talk about how to increase your income, how to manifest money, how to successfully use manifestation, the power of your subconscious mind and imagination to construct the life that you want with regards to your finances, whether that means you're launching a successful product, you are starting a business, you have a business, or you're attempting to just create wealth in your life, this is the video for you. What I'm gonna do is take the fundamental chapterizations and condense them from uh, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich combined with Neville Goddard's methodology, something that I know a lot about. And I'm going to break that down and teach you exactly how to manifest exactly what you want. Like I said, whether it's the launch of a successful business, your increasing of income, your manifesting money in general, wealth, financial freedom in a practical, implementable, data-driven way. What you will get from me is something a little different than you have heard before. I've been studying Napoleon Hill's book. It was the first book I ever read since I was 19 years old, I'm 35 now, and implemented the all of what he's taught, but nothing really manifested in its great magnitude until I began to implement the techniques and ideas of Neville Goddard. Now, I have been putting it to the test. Everything Neville Goddard has said, I have put to the extreme test. And I will tell you this in advance, anything is possible. You can manifest whatever you want so long as you utilize practical principles. Through those, the last, since uh, 12 years, I have been logging and keeping track very specifically with excruciating detail, every manifestation, that I possibly can. Tens of thousands of manifestations in my life. And as a mathematician, computer scientist, and someone who also studied physics in university, I um, have essentially been able to extract the important common denominators out of manifesting and implement it into a, an equation, a systematic method that you can use right now to manifest whatever you want. Now, that is the core of this. You do not need to just hope. You, can, you don't need to have faith that it is possible. All of that comes back to religion or comes back to belief systems that are no longer utilizable or necessary when it comes to manifesting. As a person who used to be doubtful, I never believed in anything, especially not manifesting. I was absolutely shocked when I began to experience a replicatable process just by simply keeping track of my manifestations and those of others. There was uh, uh, common denominators that you could take and use and find that are true every single time. So whether or not you want to be rich, whether or not you're trying to start a business, whether or not you're an entrepreneur or trying to be an entrepreneur, whether or not you have a business and you want it to be more successful or you just want to manifest money, this is the video for you. Because what if you could just simply know an exact process and just do it and it worked? So, as I said, condensing Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich into what I have found to be the most applicable systemized steps that also equate to manifestation the first one I want to start with is the desire. Neville Goddard talks a lot about this. In fact, many think, and he has said desires come straight from infinite intelligence, from God, from the universe. And with that said, as I said, all things are possible. This is written in scripture by the ancients thousands of years ago. If you can conceive it within your mind, if you can think of it in your imagination, it is possible to manifest. Your and. Napoleon Hill talks about this as an infinite intelligence, which is your sixth sense. And the way that he frames it is that there is something that gives you ideas that you would not be able to think of yourself. This expanded wider is usable and accessible by you right now. And the desire itself gives us direction. The direction that we need to go in in order to create our reality. So in other words, 
desire itself is the foundation. Without a desire, you won't manifest, right? A desire, manifest your desire. <laughs> that, that kind of was a recursive statement. Point being is without direction, you will not manifest with intention. So first things first, you must know what you want. Now, Napoleon Hill says a burning desire. Yes, a burning desire helps because you will keep on track. You will keep consistent. And in my experience, the businesses that I've started, the ones that I was not crazy about are the ones that never went to fulfillment. Now, interestingly enough, you can still manifest without a burning desire. You can still have a a successful business without a burning desire. So I'm going to take this back and say, you need a desire. So what do you want? There is no time wasted when you are contemplating the desire that you have. And the reason is, is because the steps that follow after this will not work properly until you've defined the desire. And in my life, it was something I found out way later than I should have. Manifestation is not something that is airy-fairy. It's not something that's random. It's not something that's lackadaisical. It's not something that you should take lightly. It changes the fabric of reality. Your experience itself must be altered if you go through the process of manifesting. God's word cannot come back void, which means if you are capable of doing the steps that I outline in this video, your manifestation must come. It has to come. There's nothing you can do to run away from that. So knowing what you want is not only good for direction, it is critical if you don't want to manifest nonsense in your life. Out of my clients, I've coached many people. I've coached um, Hollywood celebrities. I've coached New York Times bestsellers. I have coached Olympic athletes. I have coached your everyday person, entrepreneurs, whatever, seven-figure entrepreneurs. Listen, one thing I hear often by the newcomer, they say to me, how do I undo something that I've imagined that I don't want anymore? This is why I give you this, this little preface, this little um, thing in the beginning, which is to say, ensure the desire that you're going after, you actually want it and you would be okay if it happened. Not only okay with, but you accept that it must happen if you follow these steps. And if you can do that, then you follow along, continue on to what comes next. The next step is to define that into an imaginal scene that implies the end. Now, the way I liken this to Napoleon Hill, he talks about organization. He talks about a plan. Now, a plan essentially in his eyes is all of the steps required to get from the point of view of where you are now to the perception of where you need to go. Now, Neville Goddard talks about imagining the end and only the end. After dissecting manifestations that come, you will find that your consciousness is a replicating factory. It replicates what you hold within it and goes no further. Therefore, Imagining intermediary steps is not effective. It will actually just create more middles. This again was something I did not learn until way later. Now, my first successful business was at 16 years old. I had no clue what I was doing. I just knew that I wanted to make a video game. A buddy in mine, a buddy of mine, him and I created a web-based browser sorry, web browser based MMO game called Urban Riot. Highly doubt anyone's heard of it. If you have, I would love to see in the comments below. This was an online game that I launched when I was 16 years old. I was a junior in high school. That means back in 2005 or 2006. And when I did that, we did have a plan. The plan was to create a video game. We did not have any intermediary steps, but nevertheless, that was created. Where I got in my own way later on was beginning to think I had to outline every single intermediary step. Now, manifesting, interestingly enough, and as it says in scripture again, which is where I derive a lot of my fundamental techniques because they work every single time, is it says that you're supposed to imagine it as if it's already happened believe you have already received it and you shall have it. This is the prerequisite. This is what you must do. So once you define the desire with clarity, which is a definite, definite thing you must do, then your goal is, and there's no time wasted again, 
in defining what your world would look like if you already had that thing, if you had already succeeded, if you have your business, if you've broken past that position where you're stuck at your income or you have not manifested yet the thing that you want, what would your life be like? And I'm not just saying your bank account and the statement that you're seeing and seeing the numbers in it. Think of all of your life. This was something that when I began to do this, the, the, the results were radical. Money came drastically. I was able to break through all the income levels that I had and I was able to manifest business after business successfully, easily. All I had to do was ensure that I could imagine the end properly, knowing what I wanted. This is critical. So in other words, if you want to manifest, if money's only your goal, then you would define an experience in reality, in a life. So snapping your fingers, you're in a place where you have what you want. What would that be like? Where would you be? What would you be wearing? What clothes would you be wearing? What um, would you be doing day to day? What would your... Would you be busy? Where would you live? How would you feel being so accomplished? What would you buy? These experiences that you're outlining are going to serve multiple purposes. Now, interestingly enough, it was when I only imagined the end is when the middle steps, meaning the plan, began to fill itself in. Now, nowadays, right, business is my is what thrills me. It's my excitement. It's my joy aside from manifesting or included within manifesting. And they both interchange interlink. And when I imagine the thing that I want after the end, nowadays the plans begin to enter into my mind. So if you plan before you imagine your ending, you will not get the results that you're looking for. The reason I say this is because I have tried this over and over again. Success comes after you imagine it. So in other words, is there a place for step by step in business? Absolutely. It would be silly to suggest to lackadaisically carry about your days, not knowing what comes, not knowing where your next move is. But what is absolutely critical to understand is a bridge of incidents happens after you imagine a thing that you want. In other words, you imagine your ending. And I said that your consciousness is a replicating factory. And what it will do is it will rearrange the structure of the world, of the universe. It will cause event after event, situation after situation, person A to say this, person B to say that, all the way 100 people later ends up you saying the thing that gets you your desire. This is the way that reality works. Every single time you imagine the end and the rest fills in the blanks. What I discovered is, and this is how it meshes perfectly with Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich step on, the, on planning, on organization, is <clears throat> that the ideas of what needed to be done were actually placed in my thought processes automatically, I began to have the ideas of the steps that were required to get to where I wanted to go. So in reverse, you start at the end, you imagine that end, and at a certain point, the plan will come together perfectly. That's when I outline the plan. Some of the greatest, most successful people in the world to ever live, historical figures, were the greatest strategists. But hear me out. It's not the fact that they're the greatest strategists that caused them to take over the world, like Alexander the Great or Napoleon Bonaparte or Genghis Khan. That's not the, the source. The source is their ability to envision these events. So it's not their planning in and of itself that causes them to smartly and intelligently execute. No, it's just the reverse. Their envisioning of the end causes the experience to happen. So every intermediate plan that they've ever imagined, they have forced to happen through the act of imagining. So if you become a master strategist, focus on the events that you wish to experience, focus on all the core details of those things, imagining those things, which I'll get to in a minute, and you will experience your manifestation. It must happen. So there's a couple other aspects of 
Napoleon Hill's book that I want to talk about, Think and Grow Rich, and it refers to imagination, auto-suggestion, the subconscious mind, plus also imagination again. These, if you aren't familiar with Neville Goddard's teachings, are the core of manifesting in and of itself. Manifesting works as follows. You come up with the desire, you define the experience you wish to embody, and then you imagine it. And this is imagination. This is the critical, crucial step along with those other defining the desire and defining the end. This is imagination. This is absolutely critical. So the, the subconscious mind is the core to reality. Oh, also one other component of Think and Grow Rich is infinite intelligence. All of those combined, right, added to the other ones I just mentioned. You imagine the thing that you want, you bring it forth into your mind, and this is where Napoleon Hill never talked about. That was the most critical thing that changed me from failure to success. Not failure, but from success to mega success, was imagining the end in first person perspective. Remember, the consciousness is a replicating factory. And you're not gonna hear this anywhere else, okay? Although this is proven now through all my, like look at my comments, right? Watch the comments. You're not gonna read this in a book, right? This is not from a book. This is through experience. And what you'll find is when you imagine after the end in first person perspective, your consciousness will replicate the contents of what you were just aware of. In other words, if you imagine looking through your own eyes, and you're on stage accepting a reward for most innovative product or for winning the lottery, and it's through your own eyes, then what manifests that replicating factory will manifest a situation where looking through your own eyes, you're being congratulated, uh, congratulated for releasing the most innovative product. Now, this is how I manifested and I created a web app, a, a dating app of sorts, a dating website of sorts that ended up winning the most innovative product. And this was on Travel Weekly, the magazine. It was so totally awesome. And it was all through imagining, right? Success in and of itself is obviously something we work towards, but it's more important that we imagine and know the mental game to getting what we want. It's more mental than anything else. And if you want to study the great, take Neville Goddard and follow along with this data-driven approach, which I have essentially applied to modern day, right? Being able to analyze the structure of the teachings and the results thereof, and then implement it into this, this specific set of systems that works every single time. So what happens then when we imagine in first person perspective we experience the result in first person perspective we get what we want have you ever attempted to manifest usually through mainstream law of attraction or some manifestation teachers that talk about being on a movie right in a movie screen if you're a great manifester if you're a great visualizer then you will not manifest your end specifically through that means you will sometimes and that's a result of not impressing the proper imaginal faculty. But in other words, if you're amazing at visualizing and look in the comments, please below comment if you're one of the people who have manifested your desire for someone else or witnessing your desire and it was after you've imagined in third person perspective. Now, a little bit more on this third person versus first person. A human being in and of themselves has a natural tendency to imagine in third person perspective. And I believe the reason for this is because of the selfish nature of a human. This is not a negative trait. This is simply the way that we live, the way that we exist, is we want to see ourselves receiving the amazing thing, doing the amazing thing. When we strip away looking at ourself, receiving that thing, doing that thing, it takes away a little bit of the excitement associated with it. So learning how to imagine in first person perspective takes practice, but it's worth the effort. Results are guaranteed when you follow these steps. After the end is absolutely critical and first person perspective, that is the greatest way to guarantee success in this process of manifesting wealth, manifesting winning the lottery, manifesting successful business. Myself, I choose to go the business route. I'm not one that gets excited with winning things. I'm not excited with winning a lottery. If I were to win anything, it would be an award for something. Like I said, most innovative product on Travel Weekly, that was amazing. Asked to be on the radio, that was amazing. Having clients that make seven figures or that one uh, New York Times bestseller or that are on primetime TV, 
that's exciting to me. That is where I get my satisfaction. Those are the things that I manifest, that I enjoy. And with that, watching them succeed, watching these people take things to the next level, that is where I get off. That is where I find my joy and my satisfaction. So moving on, we have taken ourselves through the process of making a successful business, getting past the position where we want, getting uh, 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 from six to seven figures or whatever your goal and desire is. It's a mind game. It's a mental game. I've been doing this for a long time. I've met many successful entrepreneurs, people who run billion dollar industries, billion dollar companies, and it's always the same. Their vision coupled with the actions that they take internally are what bring them their results. Lastly, I want to talk about something that Napoleon Hill talks about and Neville talks about too, and this is persistence. Persistence in the way that works with regards to a combination between Napoleon Hill and Neville Goddard essentially looks like continuing forth in the process of development. In other words, you are going to be led on a bridge of incidents after you imagine the thing that you want, and you have to remain vigilant and wanting what you want. Now, what happens if you don't? You're still going to get your end, but what I have seen in myself is the individual who is motivated and keeping their eyes peeled to create the reality that they want often does so in a more effective and permanent manner, in a quicker manner. Now, I'm not talking about persistence as constantly imagining over and over. I'm talking about persistence with regards to being aware of your surroundings, knowing what your desire was, knowing that you've taken the proper actions to engage in those activities, to win, to get your end, and doing what it takes to get there. In my life, it simply looks like this. In my day-to-day -day life, right? Like I said, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a manifester, and what I do, business person, always coming up with some interesting idea, developing something, creating something. I've got something in the works now that will change everything, the way that manifesting works, the way that everything works. But point being, the way that I get there is I first need that definite desire, definite chief aim, right? Your burning desire. In this case, for me, I come up with an idea for an application. After I do that, I need to come up with the system. I need to use the system to derive the proper end goal. And what that looks like is I will think of a world where I have what I want. Now, what does that look like? This could be simply seeing the revenue charge charts on, say, PayPal or Stripe with the income drastic. It could be being featured on magazines. It could be the app itself being featured on magazines. It could be um, that it could be a part way of the money in the bank account, right? But find something that resonates with you. What do you want? The next step for me is to imagine what I want. So this is a process in and of itself and fits within that framework of persistence. I need to now imagine that scene with vibrant truth experience. I must experience what it would be like in first person perspective and after the end of already having what I want. Now what I do is you don't just want to close your eyes and jump right into it. You want to have this predefined because there's a very specific set of um, um, men there's a mental situation you want to get yourself into. Neville Goddard calls it the state akin to sleep. Now what that looks like and you don't need to go to this extreme but in optimal situations you wait until you are ready to fall asleep or close to that situation put yourself upright or lay in a different position that's uncomfortable for you so you don't just fall asleep and then begin to allow the imaginal act to populate your mind if your mind is jumping all over the place oftentimes what i will do is count backward first and focus on my breathing at the same time what this does is it completely disallows your mind to focus anywhere else except for on one thing, which is either counting or your breath. The mind cannot focus on multiple things at once, but it can jump around. So what this does is it prevents it from jumping around. And jumping around could be 
gazillion things on the external world. So you trade a gazillion things for one thing, which is the breathing or the counting backwards. And once your mind is focused, then you start to bring the scene into your mind's eye. Now you've already written it down, so you just bring it in. Now it's gonna, it's not gonna be the easiest thing in the world. Your mind's gonna wander around. You need to train it. After days and weeks of doing this, it will be easy, fast. But it's not easy in the beginning. This takes persistence. This takes effort. You need to be willing to do this. This is the key and the power here. Now, bring that forth into your mind and imagine that scene. Now, one thing I didn't mention that is extremely important is to make it condensed, short and condensed. Now, that means the scene in and of itself should be a small, short, concise, imaginal act that defines a reality that you're in. Shaking someone's hand and claiming the award or having the big check for winning the competition, whatever the case is, imagining that short brief scene, add all the tones of reality, emotions, thoughts, sensations, emotions, thoughts, sensations, not just sensations, not just emotion, thinking is required. This is another difference between success and failure. Once you get this scene in your mind, whether someone's congratulating you, whatever the case is, you repeat that scene over and over and over until you fall asleep, but you must repeat that scene until it's natural. The naturalness of that scene, meaning there's no effort or stress or strain, that comes after a little while because you're gonna have to use that strain and stress and pressure and effort to get the scene to stay in your mind. But the more you repeat it, the easier it becomes, like driving a car, riding a bike. That is what we're looking to do, and it usually just takes a couple minutes to do that. Once you have done that, it is done. The imaginal scene has been planted. Most of the time, your end goal will manifest without anything happening. If it comes to a business, a new idea, obviously there's gonna be stuff that has to be done. Imagine first, take action second. The the actions will come to you naturally. They will come to you in the perfect order. They will get you to be exactly where you want to go. And that is how you manifest whatever it is that you want. And in this case, I have utilized this, this process myself to start and maintain multiple businesses. Many pe- I've coached many people with the same methods and techniques. Many have used them that make seven figures, that run multiple businesses, entrepreneurs, people who have won large sums of money, people who increased their income drastically, who are now financially free. The point is, it works. This is how we do it. I've been using this for a long time, systematically testing both of Neville Goddard's and Napoleon Hill's methods and techniques, and this has brought to me the success that I have systemize continuously today. And that's what I teach on my channel. So if you want to be successful, you want to learn how to manifest, hit the subscribe button. Stay subscribed, watch the videos, put it to the test. That's the most important part. The stuff you will learn on my channel, you will not learn anywhere else. This is all practical, all through experience, all filtered through the scientific method using, luckily, my mathematic background, mathematics background, probability, and you get the systems that work. So again, hit the subscribe button if you wanna manifest what you want, you wanna have a successful business, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. When I am being very clear about the thing that I want, what the am I saying?